Hello? Hello, this is Maggie Evans. Oh, Maggie, this is Vicky. Hi. Listen, Vicky, is Roger Collins there? I have to speak to him. Have you tried his office? He's usually there this time of day. He isn't there. Have you any idea where he is, Vicky? It's important. I'm afraid Mr. Collins doesn't confide in me. Miss Winters. I'm sorry. It's... Is there any reason why I should confide in you? It's for you. Well, if it's the office, tell him I'm on my way. It's Maggie Evans. Maggie Evans? For she... me? She says it's important. without even talking to her. My dear Miss Winters, I'm late for the office as it is, and I have nothing to say to Maggie Evans. But if you told me, I, I could have said that you were busy. Are you presuming again to teach me my manners? Of course not. Because if you are, you're wasting your talents on the wrong person. I was under the impression that you were here to tutor my son, not me. Roger, have you any idea where Carolyn might be? Not the faintest. Well, when you're in town, would you look around for her? And neglect my vital task at the office? Oh, dear me, no. Did the phone ring? Just a little while ago. It was for Mr. Collins. Oh. I'd hoped to hear from Carolyn. Well, she called me earlier and told me that she might not be in for dinner. Oh, I wish I'd talked to her myself. Well, she didn't want to disturb you. She told me to tell you that. Perhaps she had a date with Joe Haskell. Of course, that must be it. He seems like a very nice boy. I think so, too. But I can't help wondering if Carolyn might not be looking for a very clever man. If you think she's serious about Mr. Devlin, I wouldn't worry. She hardly knows him. Perhaps that's what intrigues her. I'm sure she planned to meet him later in this afternoon. Fortunately, my brother was able to stop her. If Carolyn planned to meet him, I don't think anyone could stop her. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I'd better get back to David. Joe Haskell, please. Oh, Joe, this is Mrs. Stoddard. Oh, Mrs. Stoddard. L listen, I, I meant to call you. Well, uh, to apologize. There's no need to, Joe. I'm sorry I made such a fool of myself. Well, that isn't what I called about. I, I assume you're seeing Carolyn tonight. Well, to tell the truth, I, I haven't even talked to her. I'm afraid she might be a little sore at me. Then you didn't plan on having dinner with her? No, at least I don't think so. Uh, I'm not too sure about anything that happened last night. Maybe I, maybe I do have a date with her. I hope so. Joe, is Mr. Malloy there? No, he's not, Mrs. Stoddard. I don't know where he is. He hasn't been in all day. When you have a chance, will you come by to see me? I'd like to talk to you. Sure. Sure, Mrs. Stoddard. Bye. trying to prove, Pop. Why aren't you at work? I'm just leaving. I was writing you a note. I thought maybe you could sleep. Sleep it off, you mean? It's not as easy as that. What is it? You needn't concern you. Oh, Pop, that's the silliest thing I ever heard you say. Don't you know that anything that bothers you is a concern of mine? Let's just say there's, there's nothing you can do about it. I know that. I even tried to call Roger Collins. You did what? Well, I just wanted to find out what's been bothering you. You called Roger Collins? Yes. Don't get into such an uproar, Pop. He wouldn't even talk to me. Of course he wouldn't. Why should he? Didn't I ask you to stay out of this? Didn't I tell you that it was none of your business? You and your infernal prying are likely to be the death of me yet. And I'm saying that literally. For all I know, you may have signed my death warrant. Pop, Don't you... argue with me. I'm not. 
Go back to your job and your fancy restaurant and just leave me in peace. Bob, I can't leave you. You do as I say or so help me. Bob. Okay. Okay, and I'm going. Just settle down. Don't aggravate yourself. Remember, you're all I have. Your phone in working order. You didn't uh, come banging on my door to ask about my phone, did you? No, but when I was talking to you earlier, we were somehow disconnected, and when I tried to call you back, there was no answer. Naturally, I assumed that your phone was out of order. You've had enough of that. I want you to tell me exactly what you told Bill Malloy last night. I told you I don't recall telling him anything. Did you speak to anyone else? You don't think much of me, do you? No. Well, what we think of one another is uh, infinitely less than we deserve. Now, you got me into this. No, I didn't. Your greed did. And since you are in it, you've got to stay in it. Well, then what are we going to do about, uh... Well, why has Malloy been pumping me? The question is not why he was asking information, but whether or not you gave him any. Well, I'm sure I told him nothing. Well, what did you tell your daughter? Ma Maggie? Well, nothing. Then why did she call me at my house? Oh, I don't know. You know that she did call me. Yes. Well, she, she was just here. She said she'd try to talk to you, but uh, you wouldn't talk to her on the phone. Why should I? Unless she has information to give or to sell. She doesn't know anything. Anything to say against you? She thought you might be able to tell her why I was so upset, that's all. And she's more naive than she looks. I threatened her. Do you hear what I said? I, I almost raised my hand to her. I think it might have been an excellent idea if you did. I never thought I could hate a man as much as I do you. The feeling is entirely mutual. What a pity that neither of us can do anything about it. Just remember one thing. I have no intention of letting your weakness carry me down. You just said there was nothing we can do about it. Perhaps I'll think of something. Excuse me for disturbing you. I'm, I'm looking for Mr. Roger Collins. He's not at home. I'm his sister. Oh, are you expecting him? Oh, sometime later. You can probably find him at the cannery. Well, no, it's a uh, private matter. I, I wouldn't want to disturb him there. Do I know you? Oh, forgive me. I'm, I'm forgetting what little manners I have. My, my name is Sam Evans, the, the painter. Well, I'm the one to ask your pardon. We haven't met in some time. That's well, more than 18 years. Uh, I've changed since that time. Won't you come in, Mr. Evans? You sure I'm not disturbing you? Not at all. <clears throat> Perhaps I can be of help. No, no, I am. Um, I have to see your brother. Well, I told you he wasn't home. If you'd care to use the phone. Oh, no, no. Well, if, if you're sure he's not at home, uh, then I'll have to confess. I didn't want to see him at all. 
Who did you want to see? You, Mrs. Stoddard. Me? Yes, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about your brother. I don't want to hear any gossip about Roger. Oh, no. This isn't gossip, it's the truth. I think I've got to ask you to come back when my brother's home. No, no, I want to talk to you alone. Mr. Evans, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh, even if my staying would uh, help your brother out of some serious trouble? A short time ago, my brother was almost killed in an automobile accident. No trouble could be as serious as that. Well, even if it concerned another time, a, another automobile accident, say, ten years ago. What are you after, money? Oh, no. no, not more money. Well, then what do you want? I, I, I want to save my soul. Well, Mr. Evans? You know, this is the first time I've ever been in this room. It's beautiful. It's dark and gloomy and you know it. Please get to the point. To me, any room that has paintings on the wall is a beautiful room. They're all uh, ancestral portraits, aren't they? Yes. Do you know that your husband at one time consulted me about doing his portrait? Paul? Yes, I, I remember it distinctly. He uh, mentioned the size he wanted. It was... Same size as that one over the mantelpiece. <laughs> I believe I have some preliminary sketches. If I could find them, perhaps you'd be interested in seeing them. No, no, I don't want to see them. Strangely enough, someone else asked me recently to do a portrait with the same specifications. Well, that is, uh, he mentioned the size he wanted. It was identical to that one up there. You don't often find subjects in a small place like Collinsport. Okay. Not customers who can afford to pay the price. Is it a local person? Well, you may know him. He used to be a friend of your brother's. Mm. You must mean Burke Devlin. Yes. Did you agree to do the portrait? Well, uh, Burke is a very persuasive fellow. Besides, he has an interesting face. Have you had a chance to talk to him at any great length? No, not yet. But uh, if I do the portrait, of course, it uh, means several days of sittings. I wondered if he'd mentioned why he'd come back to Collinsport. Well, it is his home. Oh, I know, but a man like that who has a chance to travel, see the world, you wouldn't think he'd be content to settle in a tiny place like this. <laughs> who knows? He may have had the incentive to make money just so he could come back here. Why? I suppose he has his reasons. Mr. Evans, I see people so seldom, I'm afraid I've become a poor hostess. Would you care for a drink? Well... You. Sure, it's no trouble. No trouble at all. My brother keeps quite a supply on hand. He likes to drink himself sometimes, you know. Yes, I... I know. Mr. Blair. Ah. Will uh, uh, Bronson be joining us? I don't think so. Would you like to order? No, I'd like a drink. We can talk about business then later. Uh, scotch and water, please. Same for me. Well, now, what have you got for me? Just about everything you asked for, Mr. Devlin. Good, good. I think that now we're in a position to start picking up the outstanding notes that are held by the bank. This will give me complete control of the Colin canneries. Mr. Devlin, if you want to go further, I imagine you can gain control of any property that the Collins family has an interest in. I want to go further, Mr. Blair. Much further. I'll order later. I'm expecting someone to join me. Is this the full list? To the best of my knowledge. Your knowledge had better be perfect. That's what I'm paying you for. You can check it out for yourself, Mr. Devlin. Mr. Blair, the first thing I do is check out the people that I hire. Then I leave the details to them. 
So I don't have to check on this. I've already checked on you. Satisfactorily, I hope. You wouldn't be sitting there if it wasn't. <laughs> Mr. Devlin, I'm ready to move when you give the word. I think Mr. Harris at the bank is expecting a call from me. There's no possibility of, of him connecting you with me. Not the slightest. All he knows is that I represent a New York investment company interested in acquiring notes and mortgages. When do I start? Well, there's not much of a rush. Part of the pleasure I get from ruining the Colin Enterprises is the anticipation of doing it. You know, Blair, the thing I like about your work is that it's thorough. You never ask any questions. That's what I'm paid for. Good. You must have noticed that the only property on the list that has a mortgage is the big house itself, Collinwood. I suppose pride prevented them from putting that up to Hawk. Not at all. Mr. Harris said that Mrs. Stoddard inquired about borrowing on it, but it's an, not an asset. More like a liability. That's interesting. Who would want it? big house like that, unless somebody wanted to turn it into a resort motel or something. Not too long ago, Mrs. Stoddard put in a petition for the property tax to be reduced. The reason for it was that half of the house is shut off and not being used. And was the petition granted, I suppose? Yes, it was. And I'm not surprised. That family owns everything there is to own in that town, except me. And you want to see that reversed. You want to own everything that's there to own. Except them. Including them, Mr. Blair. Including them. Now, shall we eat? <coughs> Excuse me. Hi. Surprised? Not really. Won't you sit down? Yes, I think I'd better. Well, I think I needed that. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Now, if you are sufficiently refreshed, suppose you tell me why you came here to see me. Why, um, I, um, I've wanted to see the portraits. I've heard so much about them. Nonsense. I'm not a mind reader, Mr. Evans. What do you really want? Well, um, I want to tell you something about your family. Something I learned, you might say, accidentally. Why come to me with it? <laughs> Who else? Why go to anyone? Why not keep it to yourself? Well, that's trouble. I, I, I've uh, kept it too long to myself. Mr. Evans, I hardly know you. I certainly don't know you well enough to discuss family affairs with you. Oh, please, Mr. Stoddard. I have no idea what you expected to gain by coming here. I knew you'd sunk low, but I didn't know anyone could sink so low as to try to sell information about someone who had done something foolish. Well, I, I didn't please don't interrupt, Mr. Evans. 